Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to the commencement ceremony for the Bard High School Early College Cleveland Class of 2022. Before we begin, please take a moment, take out those electronic devices and put them on vibrate. We also ask that you keep the aisles clean or clear as our students process and recess from the hall. We encourage you to cheer, take pictures and all of that, but from your seats. Let's let everyone be able to see and celebrate their students. Okay, let's welcome the graduates.
Let's give it up for the class of 2022. You may be seated. So good afternoon, I am Dr. Mines, head of school at Bard High School Early College. I'd like to welcome our board members, CEO Eric Gordon in his absence, attending chiefs, fellow podium guests, faculty, staff, administrators, families, friends, and supporters to the Bard High School Early College 2022 commencement. Today is truly a joyous occasion in which we celebrate the accomplishments and resiliency of our class of 2022. To begin, let's welcome Reverend Jesse McMillan, pastor at the Church of the Covenant, to the podium for our opening invocation. Good afternoon and welcome to this space of celebration. Is there anything better than a graduation? I don't think so. These young people look amazing to me. We all acknowledge that this is a threshold moment, a thin place between what's been and what's to be between what's been studied and learned and accomplished and all the more there is to study and learn and do. So in a prayer of invocation, we ask God to bless this liminal time and space and those who stand in thresholds looking back and looking forward. May it be with a sense of gratitude and anticipation and an awareness of how we grow our whole life long with our whole person that we come to this time. Our minds, our bodies, our spirits, our emotions, we enter into the commencement exercises today with that gratitude. Would you please join me in a spirit of prayer? Gracious God, you create life from the earth on which we dwell and breathe into it new life and meaning. Graciously, you empower us with knowledge and skills to aid one another as we live out our life on this earth. Bless our gathering this afternoon. The graduates, the faculty, the administrators, the families and the speakers as we recall your grace and kindness to these young lives. Help us celebrate the endings and beginnings of the opportunities you provide. Empower us all to live lives worthy of the callings you offer, to build our resiliency and to hold on to hope no matter what, that we may strengthen one another and your creation as we walk together with you through this life. Amen. Next, we welcome opening remarks from Mr. Charles Johnson III, trustee from Bard College in Annandale, New York. Good afternoon. I bring you greetings from the trustees of Bard College. Uh, we just got together to celebrate 20 years of Bard Early Colleges. And so this is a milestone event. This is a milestone class. We haven't been in Cleveland for 20 years, but we have been in the early college journey for 20 years. And we're very excited about that. We're very excited about what we've accomplished and what your students have accomplished. We've already saluted the class of 2022, I have a request of them. You have before you, part at least, of your support system. The folks that have helped to bring you to this day, whether they are parents or grandparents or aunties or 
counselors or whatever. And if you're like me, you couldn't have made it this far without your support system. So can I ask you at this point to salute your support system? I want to welcome you and thank you for coming. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Lee Buddy, the Chief Engagement Officer for CMSD. On, on behalf of the Board of Education and our CEO, Eric Gordon, just want to bring greetings to all of our scholars, families, and community partners. A couple of facts about these scholars that are sitting on the stage today. They have earned over 4,000 college credits. Please give them a hand for that. <laughs> Nearly 70% of our students on this stage have also earned their associate degrees in addition to their high school diplomas. This class has received over $7 million in scholarship offers. Let's give them another big hand for that. When we look at where they're attending colleges, most of our scholars on the stage are attending colleges in four different states, and we have one student that will attend college in Wales, United Kingdom. Please stand, please stand. <laughs> they earned second place on the CMSD Girl Basketball Team Championship. They're a part of the 2022 inaugural eSports team that CMSD rolled out this year. Also, they were the 2022 CMSD Girl Swim Team Champions, and the boys were the second place champions. At this, uh, let's give them a hand for that also. <laughs> All of our Bard scholars, if you could stand at this time, please stand. <laughs> Families. <laughs> Families, we can do a little better than that. Let's pour into our scholars and give them a big hand for all their hard work. Thank you. Please be seated. Me again. I know it seemed like we never get here, but here we are, graduation 2022. I usually say that graduation is the celebration of the culmination of a student's early education. It highlights the culmination of hard work, the actualization of goals accomplished and successes achieved. I think it only fair that after a pandemic and in the midst of post-pandemic recovery, we celebrate the accomplishments of our students sitting here on this stage. <laughs> Although this is my first year working with these students in person, their reputations preceded them. Faculty tells me that even as ninth graders, they were different. Social, but not too social. Focused on academics, but not too focused on academics. Cohesive as a class, but not really cliquish. I think that they were then and still are now the perfect mix of teenager and tenacity. At, oh, y'all so sweet. <laughs> As we've gathered here today to celebrate the closure of one chapter and the opening of the next, 
I challenge us all to remember that it truly takes a village. We as family, friends, educators, and supporters in all other capacities have helped these young people along the first leg of their life journey. We all have a responsibility to continue those supports as their journey continues. To the class of 2022, know that this journey is yours. Remember that although the path along the journey might change, it might veer a little to the right or a little to the left unexpectedly, although the terrain might get a little rough and you might get tired, you are equipped to handle it all. It's time for you all to step out of what I call the barred bubble and show the world what you've got. At this time, will all students who received either private scholarships or our Say Yes scholarship please stand to be recognized? I think it's evident through the college acceptances, the scholarship dollars, and the wide array of post-secondary plans that BSEC's class of 2022 will be represented in all industries. I can't wait to see and hear about the next great accomplishment and milestones that each of you accomplish. From Dr. Mines to you, congratulations to the class of 2022. So each year, a member of our graduating class is selected to share their thoughts and hopes with their fellow classmates. This year's student speaker is Ms. Angelina Fister. <laughs> Ms. Fister joined the Barr family as a freshman in fall of 2018. During her time at Barr, Angelina has been very instrumental in the Writing Center and the Math Center, which offers support to fellow BSEC students. Angelina has been very involved in the dance department during her time at Bard, with the most recent performance being during our spring showcase. She was also captain of our championship swim team. Ms. Fister will be attending West Point Military Academy in the fall. Let's welcome Ms. Angelina Fister. Before I begin speaking on the behalf of the class of 2022, I'd first like to thank the dignitaries, faculty, administration, and staff who have made today possible. I would like to thank from Bard Early College in Cleveland, Dr. Mines, Dr. Risco, Hannah, as well as all faculty and staff. Can we get a round of applause? I'm <laughs> thank you. From Bard College, I'd like to welcome and thank Dr. Williams, President Botstein, and Trustee Charles S. Johnson III for all that they have done for Bard Early College Cleveland. <laughs> and then from CMSD, I would like to thank Dr. Lee Buddy and CEO Eric Gordon for all that they do for BSEC Cleveland. I would also like to welcome and thank our keynote speaker today um, from the Cleveland Foundation, Dale Robinson Anglin. And finally, a huge welcome and thank you to all of the friends and family that could be here today and that helped us get here today. So a round of applause for everyone, please. All right. From Summer Bridge to a year on Zoom to our final Nomester, we have laughed and fought and worked together through numerous obstacles. I can confidently say that in the last four years, we have all grown and become the people that we are today because of each other. 
We can all remember being scared freshmen, first bonding with each other at Summer Bridge, to then joining sports and clubs and meeting upperclassmen who showed us so many new things. Even then, we were made to be a part of the Bard family. I know personally, I never would have joined as many things as I did if it weren't for the people and friends I made that year. As 10th graders, we slowly stepped into more responsibility and leadership as we prepared to enter the college program and discovered more about ourselves. We then had to suddenly adjust to a world at a distance. I remember thinking I was going for a long spring break in 10th grade and then not stepping into room with all of us until this past August. Through all of this, we've been together to support each other through the good and the bad. Now, we wouldn't be Cleveland BSEC graduates if we didn't know that panic of it being 1.30 in the morning but your paper was due at 11.59 and you're thinking, I hope they're gonna take it. Um, or realizing that you're gonna need to go to office hours or the tutoring center because that assignment that you're trying to get done and you're like, it's just not happening, it's not making sense. Or the cramming for finals week, trying to get it all done and thinking, I'm never gonna make it, this is the end, I'm never gonna graduate, oh my God. But nevertheless, this was all the fire that has forever bonded us. Because of these struggles, we have developed what it needs to be successful. The greatest skill that we've been given at Bard is learning how to support and be supported by those around us, whether it be a fellow student, a tutor, an underclassman, or a teacher. At BSEC Cleveland, we're able to experience a level of academic excellence that few high schoolers are able to receive. I knew we often take for granted just how knowledgeable and experienced our staff are. From our literature department that has worked with us rigorously since ninth grade to make us the accomplished and successful writers we are today. Our history department, which has taught us how to question and research what has and is happening in the world. Our science department, which has introduced us to empirical thought and taught us how to interpret natural phenomena. To our math department, which has taught us invaluable life skills by exposing us to different types of math and reasoning. The world language department has hopefully taught us the skills we need to connect with people outside of the English speaking world. And our fine arts department has always encouraged us to look at the world through an artistic lens and nurtured our creativity. All of the coaches who have worked with us outside of school hours in addition to their teaching to make us the best possible versions of ourselves. And together, all of these departments have supported us to make us the critical thinkers that we are today, ready to analyze and inter interact with the world. But what truly makes the BSEC staff great, it isn't their curriculum. It's the invaluable perspective and mentorship that they have given us. The best thing about going to Bard is that we've joined a lifelong network of support in addition to four years of great memories and great people. I know this is true because we have already experienced the support of alumni that come back and always give back to our community. I know for a fact that all of us are prepared to do great things in our own way. I look forward to celebrating of all future achievements, of future graduations, of family started in five, 10 years from now. Thank you all for a great four years. I sincerely wish you all the best of luck in all future endeavors. Thank you. Let's give Ms. Fister another hand. Another tradition here at Bard is that we present individual students from each department with an, with an award or a book in recognition of their commitment to each subject. Each department will now have a faculty representative come forward to present their awards. We will begin with the arts. Good afternoon, my name is Dan Kenworthy. I teach music here at Bard. Um, the Arts Award goes to a student who has demonstrated excellence in both visual art and in music. They are a sculptor, an illustrator, and a storyteller. They are a music historian, a music theorist, an instrumentalist, and a vocalist. As a creator and producer, this scholar is infinitely curious and adventurous. They tell stories with their art and evoke beauty with their music. I have loved having them in the music department for these last few, few years, and I am excited to see where their creativity takes them in the future. This year's Arts Award goes to Mar Bonilla.
The next department to present will be Health and PE. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Brett Beige. I'm the health and PE teacher, and I'm also the athletic director at the school. It's always a little bit strange to give out this award because I have most students as ninth and 10th graders, but I had this student as a ninth grader and then as a year two. And I'll tell you something, this student didn't change at all. Um, she had an amazing work ethic, great personality, and even though she grew year by year, she still maintained that conscientiousness in her individual assignments and also was awesome with working in uh, groups and applied all of those awesome characteristics in health and PE. That student is Aaliyah Henderson. And now the award from the Chinese department. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Evan McCormick. I teach uh, Mandarin Chinese, and I'm presenting the award for the Chinese department. The award this year goes to a student who has demonstrated remarkable persistence, dedication in academic studies, but also a commitment to classmates and supporting them, whether it's helping them in their learning um, or general um, development and progress overall. Um, he has demonstrated amazing initiative, um, and that this has included um, our our yearly um, Lunar New Year celebration, which uh, we weren't able to do during COVID, but um, he really pushed for us to do it again this year, which manifested itself not as the uh, New Year's celebration, but rather the Asian Arts Festival, which I don't think would have happened without his initiative, to be quite honest. Um, and as well, his initiative to start the Asian and Pacific Islander Culture Club, which again helped us um, in the planning um, and making that festival happen. So whether it's his academic work or his contributions to our school community, I would like to um, thank and congratulate Brandon No. The next word will be presented by the seminar department. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Joshua Walker, and I'm here to present the award for seminar. The award for seminar goes to a student who succeeds in some of the most difficult classes that we offer at Bard. Readings in seminar are complicated, the essays are long, and the questions that we ask are enormous. What is freedom? What is justice? What is research? What does it mean to be a human being? These are big questions and they're difficult to answer. Adam Cody did a remarkable job in these classes. 
He was always ready to share his ideas in class, even when the class was online. He thought seriously about the ideas and questions he read, and he used them as inspiration for his writing assignments. His hard work in class and his bright smile make a professor's job more pleasant. Without further delay, let's show some bard love to Mr. Adam Cody. The next award will be presented by our math department. Hello, I'm Nick Altieri, the math teacher, and one of the things I've learned in life is that math is hard. And as a teacher, I often get asked by students, what's math useful for? Because it is hard and students want to know what you can use it for. And I try my best to explain that every technological advancement throughout history has been preceded by developments in theoretical math. And the connection's not always obvious. But it's very difficult to get that point across to students. So the student who I'm going to give this award to, yes, she got A's in class. And yes, she was a conscientious and diligent student. The student is Angelina Pfister, but the reason she's getting this award is not only because of her academic work, but she showed an uncanny understanding of mathematical principles and a willingness to ask questions for a high school student. So I'm very proud to give this award to her. And the award is actually a book, I just want to give a quick plug on it. It's by my professor in college, a philosophy of math professor. And I think this would be a great compliment and a way to balance a career in the military, philosophy of math. <laughs> okay, Angelina. Okay, next up we have science. Good afternoon. It is uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Stephen Wang. I teach chemistry at Bard. It is my honor to present the science award on behalf of the science department. This student, aside from his academic excellence, persistence, and perseverance, has the dexterity when it comes to dissecting. He works hard. His brain is wired like a scientist. He thinks logically and reasons with evidence. That said, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome this year's winner of the Science Award Kareem Abdallah Rivera. The next department to present is literature.
Hello, everybody. My name is Brandon Abood, and I'm here to present the award in literature. I just wanted to say good afternoon and congratulations to the class of 2022. This award goes to a student on whom nothing is lost. I remember him bursting into my room to discuss politics, current events, metaphysics, semantics, ethics, mythology, surrealism, and more. And often, none of this had anything to do with my class, um, but often it did. And this is a student who used all his literature classes in all of his literature classes. Uh, this is a student who embodies his intellectual travels, who carries them with him everywhere, and who glows with the experience of having been different places, of having thought, read, and questioned big issues with brilliant intensity. And that's Edward Kropp. The next award is for history. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Krista Adams, and I'm one of the history faculty members at Bard. Um, the work of a historian encompasses so much more than the memorization of facts or dates it involves sifting through sources, gathering evidence, and making informed analyses and assessments based upon collected information. The historian is also a chronicler of change in attitudes, beliefs, and social trends, and a predictor of possibilities to come. The student receiving the 2022 History Department Award possesses a deep curiosity about the world and has demonstrated intellectual rigor in the field of history throughout his career at Bard. The student's interest in the subject matter coupled with a desire to understand how past choices and events shape contemporary realities, distinguish them as a student thinker. Please join me in congratulating the 2022 recipient of the BSEC Cleveland History Department Award, Tony Demby. Please welcome the next award for Spanish. Uh, buenas tardes. Uh, my name is Angel Rolón. Um, I teach Spanish there. I also um, get, I also I'm the head coach of cross country girls basketball and girls softball. Um, so, we'll give a round of applause to these kids because the amount of hard work and dedication that they put in during the school hours and outside of the school hours completely baffles me that they're able to manage school, sports, arts, after school activities, and work. It, it's truly amazing. So, give them a round of applause, please. Um, yes, yes, yes. Um, but the Spanish award um, that, that we're going to give it to is, he's a student that I only had freshman year and sophomore year, but um, he was always asking questions, always wanting to learn Spanish, always wanting to get better at it, whether it was to get back to his heritage, whether to you know, be closer to his family and speak the language. And this award goes to, you already got one, and it goes to Adam Cote.
Our next award will be presented by Dr. Guy Risco. Hi. The liberal arts are oftentimes thought of as an opportunity for students to push beyond their traditional boundaries, to try some things, to take a shot at something new. The Ray Peterson Award is for a student who embodies those liberal arts principles, the idea that you can try anything. This student did everything every club, every sport, every class, including fighting me on more than one occasion about why he should not take literally three classes at the same time in one three-week span. He succeeded. I was, he begrudgingly succeeded. To do everything to the level that this student did was impressive. What stands out to me, though, is not anything that this student did or said necessarily, but the way in which he was nominated for this award. I think I can quote this from memory, but excuse me if I'm wrong. Has anybody nominated anybody for the overall award? I think it should go to this student. And that was it. There was no debate. There was no exalting needed Everybody on campus knew exactly who we were talking about and exactly why this student demonstrated what it meant to be a barred high school, early college Cleveland student. And with that, I want to say congratulations, Brandon Now. I get to stay up here for a second. It's always nice to be able to stand in front of a group of committed Clevelanders and exalt a member of our community before they speak to you. This year's commencement speaker, Dale Anglin, originally from Chicago, joined the Cleveland Foundation in 2017. Currently, she serves in the role of Vice President for Program for the Foundation, working to align the Foundation's grant-making initiatives to the ongoing needs of diverse communities in our county and surrounding ones. Prior to joining the Cleveland Foundation, Dale was the Associate Director for Programs at the Victoria Foundation in Newark, where she was, Newark, New Jersey, where she was responsible for successful programming in higher ed, STEM and STEAM education, K-12 education, summer youth employment, and leadership efforts. She holds a special place in our hearts as Bardians because she has been involved in strengthening, supporting, and founding two of our campuses, both our home in Cleveland as well as our sister campus in Newark. As Clevelanders, her role at the Cleveland Foundation was instrumental in ensuring that the Say yes program got off the ground and, as you saw earlier, impacted positively the lives of many of our students. And it is because of the work of her, the Cleveland Foundation, that we are able to have an event like this and celebrate 4,000 credits, millions of dollars in scholarships, and the ability of our students to continue to grow and be supported outside of the K-12 structure. It is without further ado that I give to you Dale Robinson Anglin. Good afternoon. So I'm going to use five words a lot today. They are voice, power, passion, empathy, and change. And I'm talking this way, but I'm really talking to the graduates over here. Um, as the graduates walk, as you walk away from high school and into the world as graduates today, you are graduates today, I want you to remember these five words. Voice, power, passion, empathy, and change. They have the ability to shape your future in profound ways. Um, 
I am. Thank you for introducing me. I'm honored to deliver your commencement speech today, and I really want to thank Mr. Tremaine from the Bard Early Colleges and Dr. Mines for inviting me to speak today. It's wonderful to be here celebrating with you, the graduates, your family, teachers, and administrators, and friends. And I hope you, the graduates, you feel the love that is in this room today. I want everybody in this room to close your eyes and the graduates in particular to feel the love that the audience is giving and the, and the teachers and the administrators are giving to you today. We are so proud of you. This is an exceptionally special moment that you should treasure and one that you have earned a thousand times over. I hope the pandemic has helped us all appreciate even more the value of community and of celebrations. I may not have met all of the students here personally, but I feel like I know your school well. As was said earlier, I helped um, fund uh, the Newark School, and I, once I moved to Cleveland, I wanted to make sure how well the Cleveland School was doing, and I'm really proud that it's doing very well. And I know because I've now been, in, I've been following Bard Early College since 2010. Um, if you chose to attend a Bard Early College, I know you are something special. You value independence, curiosity, and hard work. You are self-motivated and adventurous. Many of you have already earned your AA degrees already, and all of you have taken part in a rigorous curriculum that will prepare you for four-year college and other post-secondary opportunities. I love your school for its focus on providing a clear bridge between high school and college, for creating a space in which you can learn by failing forward, by taking risks in the classroom and finding your voice. You are already so prepared to be critical thinkers and informed citizens, and clearly we need many more of those in our world today. I know these four years did not always go as planned. You had to endure online school and a pandemic and uncertainty and political upheaval and racial and social upheaval. And I wanna say again, we're so proud of you. We are proud of the young people you have become and we are eager to support you as you move into the next phase of your life. And I know moving from high school to college can be daunting. Even though my high school graduation was a few years ago, I still remember feeling excited, but also really nervous and scared of all of the unknowns, even a bit sad to leave friends and the familiar. Please know that other people have stood in your same shoes, felt similar emotions, and when you talk with them even a few months into college, most of those fears are gone. I am also the mother of two college-age children and have very recently gone through this process. <laughs> when we dropped my daughter off at college four years ago, I was so worried about her. We got in the car to drive away. I almost convinced my husband to drive back uh, because I just was worried. And then my son, who was a couple years younger than her, sends, shows me and says, Mom, she's fine. And I'm like, how do you know that? It's social media. All of a sudden, we had only been gone like 30 minutes. She was at a party laughing with her friends, her new friends, that she didn't think she would ever meet when, she, when we left her. So just know, trust me, when I say you, you will hit roadblocks over the next few years, but you will also experience some of the greatest days and meet some of your best friends ever. Now, I'm also married to a college dean, and I've worked on higher education issues for years. So some really practical advice. Um, this is to the students, but the parents and caregivers might want to listen to it too because they might forget. When you get to college or your next, episode, your next uh, endeavor, if you're working, I, I, all of it is about after high school. Please remember to continue to ask questions. Don't be afraid to try new things. Get comfortable asking for help from your peers or your administrators or your professors. Be open to meeting a lot of new people. Sit in the front of the class and introduce yourself to your professors. 
Remember, and no one told me this when I was in college, the professors work for you. You pay their salaries. So you should be able to ask them whatever questions you want. And to parents and to caregivers, and aunties and aunts and sisters and brothers, your young people will still need you in college. The relationship may shift, but don't believe for a minute that they don't need you. They just speak it in a different language. So I began my speech today with five words, five concepts that I want you to remember as you embark on this new adventure and grow over the next few years. Voice, power, passion, empathy, and change. Some of this advice comes from my work experience, but some of it also comes from many conversations I have now had over the last two years, hosting a weekly radio show with my husband on the local WOVU Burton Bell Carr community radio. Our show is called Aspire, and it focuses on helping students and their families understand the world after high school. What happens after high school? No one, there's no playbook. Common themes have emerged from talking to both students and graduates, and this advice comes from that. So let's start with voice. I hear from your teachers and your administrators that this is not a shy bunch. You have learned or seen others use their voices for good over the last four years. From the Black Lives Matter movement to climate change to gun control, young people are speaking out and taking control of their future and our futures. Keep that up. Join the movements. Practice speaking up if you are not too comfortable with it yet. The ability to communicate is one of the most important skills you will need going forward. And now we have so many ways to communicate through social media, speech, writing, art, and many more. Find the way that is most comfortable for you and develop it. We need your voice in the rooms. Don't be shy about using that voice. Power. When I say power, I actually mean with a small p, not political power, although that is also important. I mean power over your own life, how you treat people, what you choose to spend time on. You've already been making decisions, big and small, from whether you eat healthy, to how much to study, to deciding whether to stay mad at your friend or not. In college, you'll be able to exercise a lot more of that personal power. Use it wisely. Think before you use it. Don't assume that everyone knows how to use their power wisely. Passion. What do you really like? What are you good at? Maybe you aren't sure of that answer yet. The next few years are perfect for you to find out and test your theories. Whatever, whatever your post-secondary plans are, two-year, four-year, joining the military, working, they're all good. The next few years are often when you will come in contact with people who have different perspectives and lived experiences. Ask questions. Be curious. Don't assume you know everything. Test out what you like and don't like. The point is, no matter what your actual job ends up being, remember we need to be able to find joy, too, and those passions lead to joy. Empathy. Clearly, as we all know, there are a lot of arguments right now in the world. We don't all agree on everything. As you move in the world after high school, I would ask you to be empathetic. Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another person. One of my icons, Brian Stevenson, the civil rights lawyer, writes in his book, Just Mercy, that we all have the responsibility to create a just society but we have to live with many other people in that society. So to create a just society, you must walk in others' shoes and try to understand where they're coming from. Understand their stories. We can't help people or ourselves if we don't try to understand. And then there's change. Do you like the world or the city that you live in now? Are there things you would like to change? Well, we all need your help in making those changes. Don't assume that others will do that work for you. We get the world we help make. Don't rely on elected officials, your teachers, your parents, or your boss to make needed changes. 
you will face failures as you try to make those changes. That's okay. That's how we learn. We all need to help each other in making the changes we seek. And I will just say in particular, Cleveland needs all of you to come back to Cleveland if you would like to help make our city even better. So finally, I want you to promise me something. I want you to be able to answer the following questions within the next few years. What is your superpower? I'm gonna say that again. What is your superpower? What are you extremely good at and can voice that? And, or what do you want to get extremely good at? Also, how do you describe yourself to others? And what do you value and why? When you go out into the world after this day, you will encounter many people and many situations. You won't always find easy answers. But I have found that if you have self-awareness, you know yourself and your values, you can say yes to the right things and no to the wrong things. This is a never-ending process to know oneself, but because we grow and we change. But please make time to study yourself over the next few years, no matter what you major in. The time you invest in yourself will be well worth it. So I know I speak for everyone in this space when we say that we are so proud of you. Congratulations and good luck to the class of 2022. Ms. Anglin, if you would please join me at the podium. On behalf of Bard High School Early College Class of 2022. We present you with a small token of appreciation for your time and sharing your wisdom with us today your words and your involvement with BSEC and specifically our campus has been truly uh, um, inspirational and we appreciate you. So at this time, will all faculty and staff please stand so that we can thank them for their hard work and dedication to our student success over the past four years. Bar is truly a special place because of the culture and the community that we've developed. And it starts with our faculty and staff, so we thank you. Yeah. Next, I'll ask for our stage guests to stand. And I'll ask for Dr. Ellicott to join me so that we can confer our diplomas. Principal Mines, class advisor and faculty, do you attest to the fact that these students have satisfactorily completed the requisite course of study prescribed by the Cleveland Metropolitan School District, the Board of Education, and the Ohio Department of Education? I certify that all the students on this stage today have met all of the educational requirements of the State of Ohio and the Cleveland Metropolitan School District and have passed all of the required parts of the Ohio State tests. These students are now ready to receive their diplomas. <laughs> then, on behalf of the Cleveland Metropolitan School District Board of Education, I have the very highest honor to bestow upon you, members of the Bard High School Early College 2022 graduating class, your high school diplomas with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Let's receive our graduates.
Kareem Al Abdullah Rivera. And Lalik Allen. <laughs> Jumalette Nicole Reyes Alvarez. <laughs> Karina Alvarez. Jenna Malak Samora Tala. <laughs> Aya Ahmad Awadala. <laughs> Brandon Bennett. Maricelis Bonilla. <laughs> Cheyenne Sade Campbell. <laughs> Sincere Campbell. Alonzo Carey. <laughs> James Carter. <laughs> Rosanna Campagnoani. Adam Cody. <laughs> Jose Raul Cruz. <laughs> Antonio Jose Demby. H. Marie Rivera Diaz. <laughs> Rhea Lynn Irvin. <laughs> Ivana Fairley. Ariella Flynn. <laughs> Nastasia Marie Gilbert. <laughs> Lissandro Elvin Genorio. Glenda Abigail Gomez. <laughs> Irvin Enrique Gomez Cornejo.
Azalea Marie Gonzalez. Brianna Granakis. Lily Gray. Manuel Gutierrez Ortega. Eliza Kaya Harris. Tanaya Harris. Jaden Hartman. Aliyah Henderson. Emily Holtz. Cheyenne Hopkins. Uchechi Iwanofu. Kayla Joyner Watts. <laughs> Michaela Kalashevsky. <laughs> Shia and Francis Knight. Braden Kozell. <laughs> Edward Crop. <laughs> Kalia Samira Malloy. Haley Marty. Amari Mays. Jaylene Miranda. Abdullah Mohammed. <laughs> Mario Anthony Molina. Aaron Moore. Carlos Munez Maldonado.
Brandon No. Leonardo Nunez. Angelina Pfister. Oman Pokerell. Jan Carlos Polanka. <laughs> Lindsay Nicole Reading. <laughs> Emily Reno. Lorenzo Reyes. Robin Reynolds. Darlene Rivera. Zarimar Rivera. <laughs> Layla Alicia Roddy. <laughs> Ernesto Juan Rodriguez. Yesenia Rodriguez. <laughs> Daniel Rosales. <laughs> Jessica Salgado. Amy Silvario. <laughs> Shane Singh. Jonathan Smith. Arissa S. Z. Stanley. Jane Sterling. Jake Suarez Rivera. Amarellas Torres. Hunter Edward Torres. Shauna Witt.
Giovanni Wimberly. Kyla York. Eileen Young. On behalf, on behalf of the Board of Education of the Cleveland Metropolitan School District, Mayor Justin Bibb, Chief Executive Officer Eric Gordon, I wish to congratulate the young men and women of the Bard High School Early College Cleveland Class of 2022, their parents, families, and supporters. Congratulations. At this time, we ask that all graduating seniors please stand. So hello everyone, I'm Domain Williams. Um, if we were doing a regular high school ceremony, we, we would be done, but we're doing an early college ceremony, so there's one extra step. Some of our students today have received both their high school diploma as well as an Associates of Arts degree from Bard College. And it is my distinct pleasure to certify that degree for the students here today. The tradition is that the Bard College diplomas are in Latin, and there has to be an official pronouncement by a representative of the college, which is to say, basically, that by authority vested in me, all the rights and responsibilities of the diploma that you have just received are now yours. So, I will in attempt to say that in Latin, to read in Latin. Autorisante mihi commissa vasta gradum sanuso hihi ad mito omnige hora ad provincia ed alcoc gratandum gobis concedo et in testimonium hoc diplomas gobis lito todado. Congratulations. It is also tradition that the tassel is worn on the right side of the mortar board as a symbol of change. I hereby declare that the Bard High School Early College Cleveland class of 2022 to be graduates of Cleveland Metropolitan School District and from Bard College. You may now graduates and just now move your tassels from the left side to the right side. You are now alumni of the Cleveland Metropolitan School District and alumni of Bard College. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, we share in this celebration of our students' achievements. At this time, I welcome back Reverend Jesse McMillan for our closing prayer.
Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we ask now for your almighty hand to be upon our graduates as they and their families celebrate this grand milestone. May they find comfort from this community's continued embrace and support as they journey through life. May they find strength in the excellence of their academic preparation. Bless their lives from this day on with goodness and success. Enable them to stay true to their dreams, to discern what is right, good, and just, and to use their gifts wisely and in service to others. Empower them to walk into the future with faith, hope, and great love, guided by your light, so they may use their talents too. In the words of St. Ignatius of Loyola, go forth and set the world on fire. Grace be to them. Grace be to us all. Amen. So, as we conclude our graduation, our graduates, now alumni, will recess from the main hall. We ask that our families and supporters please keep the aisles clear to allow our graduates room to exit. And we also ask that you guys remain in here for a few minutes so that we can get a wonderful class of 2022 photo outside on the front steps. I promise, you, I promise you we won't keep you long, but we just want to celebrate such a wonderful class. <laughs> Graduates, please stand and follow the principal, guests, and staff out of the auditorium. We thank you all for your patience, and again, congratulations to the class of 2022.